Hi, I'm Mike Reagan, Director of Customer Service for Lionel. I'd like to take a few minutes today and talk about your new ready to run Lion Chief Steam Set. The items that come in the set are as follows. You've got your rolling stock, and regardless of whether it's a freight car set or a passenger car set, you'll have your rolling stock. You have your locomotive, your tender, your wireless Lion Chief remote, a sample bottle of smoke fluid, your 18 volt DC wall pack. Uh, depending upon the size of the layout that comes in your set, you either have uh, three 10 inch straight sections or one 10 inch straight section. Your uh, Lion Chief uh, lock on that has the barrel jack adapter, accepts the uh, adapter from the power supply. Eight pieces of 036 curve track and uh, an instruction manual that uh, we really suggest that you read. It's got a lot of good information in there regarding your set and uh, tell you a lot uh, about how to service the product and how it works. So before we get too far into this video, a couple things that you need to know right out of the gate. All of the control electronics for the train are located inside the locomotive. The speaker, however, is located inside the tender. The tender needs to be on the track and connected to the locomotive using the four pin drawbar connector right behind the cab. If those two aren't connected, you're not going to get any sounds at all no matter how hard you try. The uh, wireless remote, every wireless remote with the Lion Chief set is uh, labeled and it is specific to the locomotive and the set that it comes with. So in this instance we have uh, Pennsylvania and the cab number 421. This is a Pennsylvania flyer set so our locomotive is a Pennsylvania and the cab number on the side of the cab is 421. That remote will only talk to this locomotive. Um, will not control any other locomotives. Uh, for instance, if you have a Polar Express set, it'll say uh, the Polar Express, and the number down on the bottom will be 1225. Um, the Polar Express locomotive cab number is 1225. That remote will only control that locomotive. Now, here's the trick. If you have two Pennsylvania Flyer sets, you purchase two of them, and you have two locomotives with the same ID number, same cab number, and same remote, one remote will control both locomotives. So if you have a lot of kids, or you have more than one, and you're buying trains for more than one kid at a time, might want to buy separate train sets. Otherwise, the drama that will unfold between two kids with one remote running the same engine, glad I'm not going to be there. So without further ado, let's get started on setting up your train set. To set up a uh, Lion Chief set, you're going to use the fast track. Basically, the uh, track snaps together pretty simply. Uh, it goes together in either direction. The uh, pins insert to the rail on the opposite track, and you just snap it together. Um, two curves make up a, uh, a 90 degree corner, so four curves on each end. We'll get you back, head in the other direction. And we've got the straights. Now if you refer to your product manual, there's a couple different uh, layout configurations that you can arrange uh, with the, the track that uh, comes with the train set. It's entirely up to you how you arrange the track, of course. One thing that is uh, worthy of mentioning is that this fast track uh, barrel jack adapter track, you're gonna wanna locate this pretty close to the electrical outlet where this power supply will be plugged in. Um, it is important though that it be accessible from wherever you are in the room. So if you're gonna put this around a Christmas tree and this would be the wall back behind the Christmas tree, you're gonna want this out here by the side or uh, out in the front. And the reason for that is when you're done operating the train, you either want to unplug the wall, the uh, wall transformer from the outlet or unplug the barrel jack uh, from the track to remove power from the track. Um, so the placement of this, uh, this power lock on is very important. Um, to finish up the layout, I'll just go ahead and put the rest of this together. Kind of reaching over this table here, a little awkward. Now the great thing about Fast Track is that it has the roadbed built into it. This does a couple things for you. 
one, if you're using the uh, train on carpet, it keeps the, uh, the, the track uh, level and flat so the train runs smoothly, doesn't derail. If you're using it on hardwood floors, um, again, keeps the track nice, level, stable, and uh, keeps the trains running straight. Now, as I mentioned before, um, when it's time to power up the track, you just take your, uh, your barrel jack adapter. Uh, the other end of this barrel jack adapter is a wall transformer that plugs into a standard 110 volt outlet. Take the barrel jack adapter and insert it right into the uh, power lock-on. When you do that, the red LED will illuminate. That red LED tells you that power is applied to the track. Once you're done operating the train, um, once we get into uh, demoing how the train works, you'll realize that as soon as you apply power, the sounds on the train come alive. So uh, what we're gonna wanna do is, or what you're gonna wanna do, is go ahead and unplug this once you're done running the train. That'll get the sounds to shut off. It'll also uh, keep the track free of any type of electrical um, current, uh, keep you nice and safe. Now, again, simply plug in the barrel jack adapter into the uh, adapter track or lock-on track, and the red LED illuminates. Um, one great thing about that LED is that in the event that you have an, a derailment where the, uh, the track shorts out, that red LED will turn off, telling you that your uh, wall transformer has, uh, has shut down. Once you clear the short, the LED comes back on telling you that track power is once again applied and uh, everything's okay to start running the train again. Now that we have the track set up and positioned where we want it, it's time to go ahead and place the locomotive and tender on the track. I would uh, suggest that you leave the track power unplugged at this point and uh, only put the, uh, the locomotive and the tender on the track. The reason I'm pointing this out is because this, this draw bar right here that connects the tender, I'm sorry, the, the tender to the locomotive uh, plays a vital role in the uh, proper operation of the set. This draw bar has a four position connector that transfers two wires from the locomotive back to the tender itself. So to, uh, to do this, make sure that the tender is properly on the track, lift the locomotive up, place the draw bar from the locomotive into the draw bar of the tender, and simply press down. You wanna make sure that there's a flat plane across that draw bar from the engine to the tender, flat plane. That'll tell you that the uh, connector is firmly in place and that it's making good electrical contact. The next step in preparing the train to get to uh, start running is that you need to put batteries in your uh, wireless Lion Chief remote. So flip the remote upside down. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, you wanna go ahead and remove uh, that safety screw on the battery cover. Now we need to install three AAA batteries. Now it's very important that you remember that you want to use alkaline batteries, not nickel cadmium, not rechargeable batteries, but just straight up alkaline AAA batteries. You also want them to be new. We strongly suggest that you don't mix uh, new and old batteries together. Putting new batteries in will ensure a good strong radio signal from this remote to the locomotive and, uh, and reliable operation. So put that battery cover back on, tighten the screw back up. You'll know that you've gotten it right when you flip on the power switch and the red LED at the top of the remote comes on. Turning the uh, remote off shuts the uh, LED off. It's really important that you uh, remember to turn that remote off when you're done operating the train. If you leave the remote on overnight, it will most likely drain down the batteries and you'll have to uh, replace the batteries in the morning or the next time you want to operate the train. Now when you first apply power to the track, and uh, at this stage of the game, we pretty much just have the locomotive and the tender on the track, which is about where you want to be when you're first starting out. Um, track is set up, locomotive and tender are on the track, draw bars connected. We're going to take the uh, barrel jack adapter track and we're going to plug it into this lock-on. But before we do that, one thing I want to point out is that as soon as you apply power to the track, when the uh, sound or the chuff switch is in the on position, and we'll cover that later in the video, but when it's in the on position, as soon as you apply power to the track, the locomotive sounds are going to start up immediately. Now, whether the remote is turned on or whether the remote is turned off doesn't matter. The sounds are going to come on as soon as power is applied. 
This is why I pointed out earlier that uh, when you're done operating the train, you're definitely going to want to unplug it. So let's go ahead and get it plugged in. As soon as we power up, sound start up. We're going to take our remote. And uh, right now the remote is off. We're going to turn the remote on. As long as the dial is in the top dead uh, center position, pointing to the uh, solid red LED, the train won't move. If you power up the remote and the train is dialed forward or dialed reverse, it's going to immediately start moving in that direction. So you want to make sure that the uh, remote is in the off position when you power up that track. So like I mentioned earlier, the train doesn't go anywhere. It takes all of its commands for movement and sounds from the remote. So we'll go ahead and turn the remote on. And uh, we pretty much only have four items to deal with on the remote. We have the throttle, the whistle, announcements, and bell. Whistle, you press it, the whistle blows whether the train's stationary or moving. The announcements, we'll get to that in a second. And then the bell, once you press the bell one time, the bell stays on until you press it again, at which point it turns off. Now the announcement button. The announcement button varies uh, in terms of the sound it activates based on every single set. So this is a Pennsylvania Flyer freight set, so it has uh, freight specific announcements uh, that you typically hear on a railroad. Um, some of the more themed holiday theme sets, Polar Express, they have uh, announcements that are specific to the licensed property, or uh, in the case of the Silver Bells holiday set, um, when you press the announcement button, the train goes from steam shuffling sounds and starts playing Christmas carols. Uh, so every single set varies. Um, it's one of the cool things about the Lion Chief technology. It gives us the ability to uh, build in some cool play value into each different set uh, based upon its theme. So if you turn the dial forward, the train will begin moving in the forward direction. The LED at the top of the remote blinks when the train's in motion. So it blinks slow to tell you the train's going slow, blinks fast to tell you the train's going fast. It does the same thing in reverse. Turn the throttle to the top dead position so the LED is solid. The train stops. We go in reverse. The train runs backwards. That's pretty much how the Lion Chief set works in a nutshell. A couple things to point out. Number one, that remote. That remote. It's really designed to be up to about 25 feet away from the train, and that's about it. So if you try to go a further distance than that, and the train either stops running or the remote stops uh, controlling the train, it's more than likely a problem related to distance. Um, sometimes if you're not pointing the remote towards the train, say you're uh, facing a wall or the remote's facing the wall opposite of the train, turn the throttle, the train doesn't run, just take the remote, turn it around, and point it towards the train. While it is a radio frequency, um, that is uh, in play between the remote and the locomotive, you're going to pretty much want to keep it within a close proximity, within reason, and like I said, if it doesn't respond, just uh, point the, the remote towards the locomotive, shoot it a whistle command, and everything should be back to normal. So once you've had the train running, it's uh, probably a good time to go ahead and put the rest of the cars from the set on the track. A couple things worthy of mention here. Our, uh, our freight cars, most all of our freight cars in our ready to run set have operating couplers. And the way that this works is, the coupler itself has a small plastic, what we call a plunger. And when you pull the plunger down, the knuckle up here on the car itself, this piece that opens and closes, when you pull the plunger down, the knuckle opens, which allows you to couple it to a car uh, right in front or right behind it. So we recommend that you open the coupler by simply pulling down on the plunger very lightly. Coupler knuckle will pop open. You want to do the same thing to the opposite side. Just go ahead and pull that plunger down until that knuckle opens. And then you want to place the car on the track. Now, you'll want to do this at first with the power unplugged. A, so the sounds aren't playing. And uh, B, 
so that you can listen to make sure that the car rolls freely on the track and you don't hear this sound. That'll tell you that the car is off the track and uh, having the train off the track is a bad, bad, bad thing. So you want to make sure the train's on the track, roll it forward with that knuckle open, it'll couple right up to the locomotive or the tender. Do that for the rest of the cars in the set by uh, opening that plunger up. It'll make it a lot easier than having to lift it off the track and couple it by hand. Put the rest of the cars on the track and you're in uh, good shape. You're ready to go. Power up the track and uh, get the train underway. All right, let's take a few minutes and talk about the switches that come on your locomotive. Every Lion Chief locomotive has two switches on it. One that allows you to turn the sounds off, turn the sounds back on. Now when the sounds are in the off position, the whistle, bell, and announcements are unaffected. However, the background sounds and the steam chuffing sounds won't be heard when the train is running or powered up. The other switch that we have is the smoke on off switch. This switch uh, plays a pretty big role. If you do not intend to use the smoke unit on this train, we strongly suggest that you move that switch to the off position. However, if you do intend to use the smoke unit, leave the switch in the on position. However, it is very key that you remember to keep smoke fluid in the locomotive when the train's running or whenever it has power. The smoke unit will consume smoke fluid at uh, every, every train set does this at a different rate depending upon the locomotive. But when you notice the, the smoke starting to dissipate, you'll know it's time to go ahead and add a few more drops of fluid. And we'll get into how to do that in just a few seconds. First, let's talk about these, uh, or more specifically, let me show you where these switches are and um, how they work. So on our 280 locomotive, we have two switches, chuff and smoke. Currently, both switches are in the on position. Like we mentioned earlier, if you don't plan to use smoke, you want to move the switch to the off position. This will ensure that your smoke unit is not permanently damaged by not having smoke fluid in there while the heating element is, uh, is warm. If you do plan to operate the smoke, you want to make sure the switch is in the on position. For the sounds, if you don't wish to hear the steam chuffing sounds and the uh, idle sounds, simply move the switch to the off position. Whenever you move these switches, you do have to interrupt track power for at least two seconds for these changes to take effect. These switches are located directly underneath the cab of the locomotive. So here we have the cab with our engineer and fireman figure and right underneath is where these switches are located. Now, as I mentioned previously, every locomotive is different. So refer to your owner's manual for the location of the switches on your specific locomotive. Now your Lion Chief uh, ready to run set comes with a sample bottle of smoke fluid. This is enough to get you started. However, you're gonna wanna get a bottle of uh, 6-37841, which is the Lionel Premium smoke fluid. It's pretty much the only smoke fluid we uh, approve for uh, use in our locomotives. So as you read your instruction manual, it'll tell you to uh, remove the uh, cap of the bottle. And uh, the tip of the bottle is actually sealed from the factory so that uh, we don't get smoke fluid leaking in the bottle or leaking in the package. So the manual tells you that uh, you're to pop the, uh, the top of that bottle using a pin. So you just want to make a very small hole in the tip of that bottle. And the reason that that's important is because uh, if you cut that off, that smoke fluid is going to pour out when you tip this bottle upside down. By creating that, uh, by creating that uh, very small pinhole, you're able to uh, you're able to control the amount of drops of smoke fluid that come out of the bottle itself. One drop, two drops, three drops, and so on. The reason that's important is because the amount of smoke fluid that you put in your train is uh, really going to tell you, is really going to make the difference between whether your train smokes or your train doesn't smoke. If you don't put enough in, you're not going to get smoke. And if you put too much in, you're going to damage uh, some sensitive electronics inside the train itself, and uh, that's not good for you or for us. So the amount of smoke fluid that you put in for any ready-to-run Lion Chief set is four to five drops at a time. Once you put in four or five drops, that's it. Let the train run, it will smoke, and when that smoke starts to dissipate, get down to being barely visible or barely existent, you'll know it's time to put four to five more drops in 
and that's it. Please, whatever you do, don't overfill your smoke units. It, uh, it's really a bummer. It makes the train not operate, and uh, pretty much the train has to come into Lionel to be serviced. Um, it takes a little bit of time, and it's an incon inconvenience that you can avoid simply by putting the right amount of smoke fluid in the train the first time. So you've selected to go ahead and run the smoke unit on your train. We just covered how to pierce the top of the bottle, and now we want to put in four or five drops. So very slowly squeeze the bottle until we get one, two, three, four, five. Five drops of fluid is really all we want. Anything more than that, you're going to flood out the smoke unit, cause damage to the electronics. It is important to note that the smoke fluid goes into the smoke stack. If you're uncertain of where the smoke stack is on your particular locomotive, just refer to the instruction manual. It'll point it out for you. Okay, so at this point we've got uh, the sound switch in the off position. We've put uh, five drops of smoke fluid in the smoke unit or in the smoke stack. Um, we've got the smoke switch in the on position. We're going to go ahead and start running the train. Now, like I said earlier, when the uh, chuff or the sound switch is in the off position, Power will be on, but no sounds will be heard from the locomotive. So we get the engine running by turning the throttle on our remote. And you'll notice that it'll take a few seconds for the smoke unit to start producing smoke. As we let it run around the track, after, I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds, it'll really start producing smoke that uh, can be seen from just about anywhere. So even though the sounds of the locomotive are off, we can still activate the whistle, the announcements, and the bell. So we'll let the train run for a while, and eventually that smoke will begin to dissipate, peter down a bit to the point where we can't see it anymore. That's when we'll know it's time to add a couple drops of smoke fluid to uh, reload the smoke unit and make it smoke again. Let me give you an instance of what happens when the remote loses contact with the locomotive. The way we're going to demonstrate that is I'm just going to turn the remote off. The train's going to go ahead and keep running. This is normal behavior for a Lion Chief set. Eventually the train will come to a complete stop and stop running altogether. However, it takes a few seconds. To get the train running again, as we mentioned earlier, if the uh, throttle is in the uh, movement direction and we turn the uh, remote on, the train's gonna start moving right away. So I've been running the train here for about uh, 10 minutes. And uh, as you can start to see here, the, uh, the smoke is pretty much dissipated to a point where it's, uh, where it can't be seen. A little bit of smoke coming out of it now, but uh, not nearly as much as there was when, it, uh, when we first put the smoke fluid in. So we're going to go ahead and run the train back here, add a couple more drops of smoke fluid. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want you to see um, what it looks like when the train uh, when the train runs out of uh, smoke fluid or not runs out but burns through the smoke fluid that it had. So we're just going to go ahead and put about three drops in at this point. Yeah, I put four drops in. So four drops of smoke fluid is really all that's needed. We're going to go ahead and get the train running. And again, it's not uncommon for it to take a few seconds for it to start producing smoke. But uh, smoke will uh, be seen on the video here in just a second. So there's the smoke. Again, we're not putting a lot of smoke fluid in here. Just two, three, four drops at a time. And uh, you want to run it until that smoke um, pretty much can't be seen anymore. And then a couple more drops at that point. Once you put smoke fluid in here, it's going to run 10, 15 minutes producing smoke depending upon the speed in which you run it. And then that, that smoke's going to dissipate. So, uh, 
certainly hope you don't have any uh, unrealistic expectations of I put smoke fluid in my train once and it's going to smoke for the rest of its life because it's just not going to happen. Once again, make sure you don't overfill that smoke fluid. That smoke fluid. Putting more smoke in causes more damage. Um, I've seen it time and time again here in customer service. It's just really unnecessary. Folks get impatient. Uh, they think that uh, if a little is good, more is better, and that's just not the case with the smoke unit. A couple drops at a time, and that's it. We certainly hope that uh, you uh, enjoy your line of chief ready to run set, and uh, that you come back uh, to line out for a future purchase. Okay, so you've got your Lion Chief set set up and you're having some troubles. It happens. One thing you got to remember is uh, no matter how irritated you are, the first thing you got to do is take a deep breath, relax, and uh, walk through the process step by step to find the problem, correct it, and be back to running the trains. So uh, this is a quick little simple troubleshooting video designed to uh, help you walk through those steps and uh, figure out the problem. So let's assume for a minute that uh, the problem is that uh, the red LED on the power block is not illuminated. The first place you start is you take the train off the track. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and remove the locomotive and the tender from the track. Go ahead and remove all the cars. If that red LED still doesn't come on, the next thing you want to do is you want to un unplug that uh, that uh, piece of track from the rest of the track. Is the short somewhere in the track? Is the short in the uh, in the lock-on? Or is it a bad transformer? Don't know until we try. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and disconnect the lock-on track from the rest of the loop. So we've done that and uh, what we have is the red LED is illuminated. So at this point we know that the transformer and the track itself is good and it's putting power to the track. In the event that that red LED is not illuminated, you might want to try taking that wall transformer and putting it into a different outlet. Um, if after putting it into a different outlet it still doesn't work, transformer's faulty. Give us a shout at customer service, we'll get a replacement transformer out to you. In the event that it's not faulty and the LED is illuminated, you want to go ahead and put it back into the track. Now once you do that, let's just assume that the red LED goes out. That's going to tell you that there's a short in the track somewhere on the layout. It's really simple to figure it out. Start by disconnecting the layout in half. So separate this side from the other side. Does the LED illuminate? If it doesn't, then we know for a fact that the short is somewhere in a piece of track from here to there. To do it, simple process of elimination. Just unplug track sections one at a time, keep your eye on that LED. Once you unplug the piece of track that has the short, that LED will come back on. It will know that that section of track, and for this instance we're just going to say it's this curve track, is the problem. Really simple. Flip the track over. The only place a short can occur is on the underside. Check for debris, uh, maybe a stray piece of wire, piece of aluminum foil, maybe some tinsel from a Christmas tree. Make sure that it's not touching anywhere between the two outside rails and the center rail. If it is, remove it, put it back on the, uh, on the layout, keep your eye on that LED. Once you plug it in, if it illuminates, you'll know that the problem solved. Put the track back together and get back to running the train. So we've removed all the trains from the track and the LED comes back on. That pretty much tells us that something that we put on the track wasn't really on the track. It was creating a short circuit. So at this point, we want to just put each item on the track one at a time. Make sure it's on the track, rolls freely, and the red LED on the power lock-on stays illuminated. Pull down on the plunger to open up the knuckle. Place the next car on the track. Make sure the LED stays illuminated. Do this until all the components of the train set are back on the track.
We have all the components back on. Headlight of the locomotive is illuminated. The red LED is still on. That pretty much tells us that somewhere along the line we had a derailment. The train came off the track, was sitting across the center rail and the outside rail, and turned that red LED off, telling us that we had a short circuit. By correcting the short, red LED comes back on and we're ready to run the train. Now, if you have an instance where you're running the train around the track and all of a sudden it just stops, dead, no power, sounds are off, uh, maybe a lighted car is still illuminated, but the locomotive stops, doesn't play any sounds, doesn't respond, doesn't do anything. Easiest thing to do is just back the train up or move the train forward, past that section of track that it's sitting on, and see if power comes back on. We have seen a few instances in the past where the pins on the center rail of the track don't make a good contact inside the rail. So it's really a simple thing to fix. And uh, we'll zoom the camera in and I'll show you how to do this. But effectively what you're doing is you're taking that center pin and you're just bending it a tiny bit towards the, uh, the large pin in the outside rail. What that'll do is inside the connector itself is it'll ensure that the, instead of the two pins floating, the two pins will actually reach in and touch one another, make that electrical contact from one section of track to the other, fix your problem, and you'll be back to running in no time. All you need to do is find a, uh, a hard surface. Uh, we've got a piece of MDF underneath this tablecloth here. It's got a nice 90 degree angle on it. Uh, a rounded corner or a, uh, or a countertop is probably not where you want to do this. Um, but just find something with a hard edge. And this is the pin we want to concentrate on right here. And all we want to do is we want to put a slight bend in this piece of metal and move it towards this larger pin here. So place that down on the table and just apply a little tiny bit of downward pressure to get that pin to bend just a little bit. Now that pin shouldn't be too loose. Should just wiggle a tiny bit. And uh, again, we just want to bend it towards this pin so that when we connect it with another piece of track, the two pins actually uh, make good contact with one another. And this will prevent, this will actually solve the problem altogether of, uh, of the track not, uh, not making good contact or losing power. Now when you go to plug it in, that one pin you just bent is going to want to bend to the outside. That is, uh, that's actually not correct. What we want it to do is we want it to go on the, uh, on the opposite side so maybe we give it a little knock around there, pre-fit it in here like so. That's how we want the pins to slide together, where both pins go into the tubing of the rail. Push the track back together, and we're back in business. Can put the train back together, and uh, we're up and running. If the problem is a problem between the remote and the locomotive, the easiest way to sort it out is to start with the remote. First off, replace the three AAA batteries in the remote with known good AAA batteries or new AAA batteries. You don't want to mix new and old batteries together. The remote itself only requires about four volts of uh, power from the batteries to operate. Those three uh, AAA batteries together make four and a half volts. So. The three new batteries will give a little bit more voltage than what the remote needs to operate. Starting with new batteries is the first step. Now, once you've got new batteries in the remote, simply blow the whistle. If the re remote tells the train to blow the whistle, then we know the remote is not the problem. Or at least we pretty much suspect that the remote's not the problem. At that point, you can go ahead and turn the throttle. And if the train starts to move, Problem solved, you're back to enjoying the product. If the train doesn't move, you're most likely going to need to contact Lionel Customer Service. Walk through some simple troubleshooting procedures so uh, we can discern whether the problem is the remote or the locomotive with you on the phone by the product itself. Um, if the problem is that the uh, sounds in the tender don't play, um, got to make sure that the tender is connected to the locomotive. As we mentioned uh, in the setup video, all the electronics are in the locomotive, but the speaker's in the tender. So on a steam locomotive, tender, 
tender and locomotive need to be on the track with the drawbar properly connected so you have a level plane between the locomotive drawbar and the tender drawbar. As long as those two are firmly uh, connected and you still don't have sounds, next thing you want to do is check the uh, chuff or sound on off switch and make sure it's in the on position. If you've done that and you still don't have sound, you need to reach out to customer service and we're going to have to walk through some steps with you. If your problem is uh, that the cars won't stay coupled, you're running the train around the track and all of a sudden the uh, cars pop loose, locomotive smashes into them, it's a really simple fix. Um, every coupler has what's called a, uh, or almost every coupler has what's called a coupler plunger. And it's pretty much designed to allow you to uh, remotely uncouple the uh, freight cars anywhere on the layout using a 6-12020 which is really a uh, electromagnet that when you push the button the electromagnet energizes it pulls the uh, the metal thumbtack and the bottom of the plunger down and it causes the knuckle on the coupler to open well sometimes those uh, those uncoupling plungers have a tendency to want to sink down which causes the uh, the knuckle to open under load Really simple fix. Involves a pair of pliers and about three seconds of your time. We'll, uh, we'll do a close-up video on that plunger and show you how to fix that in just a second. If while operating the train, you notice that the cars become uncoupled with one another, the most probable cause for this is that the coupler plunger, the piece that holds the knuckle closed, is just a little bit loose or slightly deformed and not holding the knuckle closed. The coupler plunger is located directly underneath the coupler itself. It has this metal disc that allows it to be pulled down by an operating uncoupling or uncoupling section. In the setup video we mentioned how pulling down on this plunger pops the knuckle open on the car. It is possible that this plunger is just simply not bent up enough holding that knuckle closed. If you experience a problem like this it's an extremely simple fix. It will involve a pair of pliers and just a tiny bit of skill. Take the coupler plunger and push it downward. Take the pliers and place it on the flat spot of the coupler plunger and simply bend it up towards the knuckle. Hold it there for a few seconds. Release. Let it reseat. Close the knuckle. Place the train back in the consist and operate the trains normally. We have here just one of these plungers by itself and as you can see they are designed to be bent up in the event that they don't hold the knuckle closed. Simply bend them up in such a manner as this so that that pin is forced up into the coupler far enough to keep the knuckle closed. Should you notice your locomotive struggling to pull the train, it is quite possible that you may have some lint or carpet fibers wrapped around the axle of the cars. The great thing about these entry level sets that come with the plastic trucks is that it's very simple to remove the wheels from the trucks themselves. Do so by applying just a little bit of pressure to the side frame, this section right here, apply a little bit of pressure and pull upward on the axle set. The axle will come out or the wheel set will come out. It will allow you to remove that lint or uh, carpet fiber that's wrapped around the axle and then to place the axle back into the truck simply drop it into the holes with a little bit of pressure it snaps right back into place. In the event that you have a car on the train that is illuminated that car will have a center rail collector or pickup roller as well as a strap that contacts the axles on the truck. As we mentioned earlier it is possible that these wires can come disconnected from their soldered positions. If that's the case it's very simple to determine what the problem is by removing the collector shoe. Screwdriver or any similar object will allow you to pop this out, flip it over to inspect the wires and ensure that they are in fact soldered properly to their contacts. Once you've confirmed that they are in fact soldered correctly you can move to the other truck and see if a wire is loose there. If your steam locomotive is running along the track and suddenly stops 
and you can't figure out what the problem is, the most probable cause for this is that the side rod or the side linkages have a bind in them. It's not uncommon for a lot of people to pick the locomotive up and grab onto it down on the frame. When they do that, they oftentimes squeeze these side rods. What ends up happening is these side rods smush into the locomotive and then the screws that hold on the side rods themselves get bound up in the linkage. If you think you have a problem where your locomotive won't run or it won't run in forward or reverse, we strongly recommend that you check these linkages and especially ensure that there are clearances between all of the various rods and appliances between the wheel and the outside details of the locomotive. Lionel Customer Service is available to assist our valued customers Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You can also find us online at www.lionel.com and click on the Customer Service tab.